And, you know, we date heavily before we marry. I spent most of my life in Europe. Quite frankly, I date very heavily before I never marry. Palantir is playing an entirely different game. A lot of companies are chasing big numbers, millions of users, endless clients, you name it. But for Palantir, they're not interested in being everyone's go-to software. Instead, Carp and his team are zooming in on a select group of powerful clients to make deep partnerships rather than broad reach. But why? Well, because for Palantir, it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality of these relationships. They're betting that fewer partnerships will fuel their long-term success far more than casting a wide net. So in this video, we're breaking down why Palantir's quality over quantity strategy isn't just smart, it's crucial for building their moat. Welcome back everyone, this is Munir from Fast Dollar. Let's hear what he said first. Instead of trying to have 10,000 clients, all of whom hate you, it's kind of what people want, 10,000 clients that hate you, but they can't get rid of your product. We want a smaller number of the world's best uh, partners that quite frankly are dominating with our product. And the way you do that is by having, a, by not blowing up your margin and getting 10,000 salespeople, it's actually by going deeper on the product. And in fact, what we see is the deeper and the better the product, the more we drive sales, the more we have our cultural singular advantage as Palantir, not as a commodity product. It's like we are not a commodity. We do not want our customers to be commodities. We want them to be individual titans that are dominating their industry. But by the way, I don't think you'd get higher growth than what we have. And honestly, although we, of course, are always pushing and want even higher growth, we have 44% growth in the most important market in the world, arguably the, not the only, but by far the most valuable market in the world, while having a rule of 68, i.e. the best in the world. And we're going to maintain the contradiction of having both high margins and high growth. It's not one or the other. They're actually interplayed and they're not a contradiction. They power each other. That's how you know you have world-class products. That's what you see in your numbers. The goal of these partnerships is to create powerful relationships with clients who can use Palantir tools to dominate their industries. And this is not a new take from Alex Karp. He's been talking about this vision for years now. Check out this interview from 2016 where he laid out exactly why going deep, not wide, is their winning formula. There have been reports that uh, you've lost a lot of commercial customers. Basically say, we don't know why we're using this. I mean, a lot no, of the data, what happened? What happened? We, we, you're still single almost, and you know, we date heavily before we marry. I spent most of my life in Europe. Quite frankly, I date very heavily before I never marry. And, um, uh, and uh, we always are interested, on the, on the government side, we, we go all in. If you're Special Forces Portugal, we will go in. We will show up. We will show up. If you say you're not going to pay us, we'll still show up. If you, I can't obviously go into specific customers, but I and the company are very focused only on commercial clients where the aggregate value of the customer could be $100 million or more. I'm not, see, but you need to go back to dating. Just because they're great doesn't mean we have a great fit. I'm not disparaging any of these people as companies. I'm just saying there are a lot of companies. We can't work with every company. We have, from 2014 to now, we have 10x growth on $100 million contracts. 10x growth. How did we get that? Partly by saying yes, and a lot by saying no. By saying, you know, you are a great company. You are doing great things. We are a unique company filled with odd people like me. We may not fit. That's fine. It's a big ocean if it's in the commercial context. Yeah. If it's in the government context, I will, we will show up and show up. We will try to force marriage. If you don't want to marry us, we'll show up the next day. But we don't do that in the commercial context. From this, we can see that Palantir is not pushing out some weak products for the sake of quick margins. The company's core belief is that a top tier product is what drives sales and sets them apart from the competition. And this commitment to product quality isn't just a nice thing to have, but it's the reason behind their success. And usually companies have that growth at any cost mindset, even if it means squeezing margins dry. But in Palantir's case, they're betting on their top tier products to deliver both high growth and high margins. As you can see here, a 30% growth rate in an extremely competitive market. And then there is their 20% profit margin, a metric they proudly claim to be the best in the world. Palantir makes the case that high growth and high margins aren't opposing goals. They're two sides of the same coin. These metrics work hand in hand, each fueling the other. Honestly, I think it's smart as hell. Palantir is essentially playing the long game here. Quality over quantity, and it is a win-win. 
their clients get solutions tailored to them and balance your locks in a customer base that's less likely to jump ship. And this is how you build a moat. And more importantly, how do you compete with giants that are 10x your size like IBM or Oracle? Balance Year's answer is their focus on quality and specialization. And this cycle of profitability feeding growth and growth feeding profitability is what keeps Balance Year going. They've built a financial engine that lets them invest big, stay competitive, and in the end to grow.